almost paradise. Mike Bowman whistled cheerfully as he drove the Land Rover through Cabo Blanco Biological Reserve on the west coast of Costa Rica. It was a beautiful morning in July. The road before him was spectacular, hugging the edge of the cliff overlooking the jungle on the blue Pacific. According to the guidebook, Cabo Blanco was unspoiled wilderness, almost paradise. Seeing how it made Bowman feel as if he, the va vacation was back on track, Bowman, a 36-year-old real estate developer from Dallas, had come to Costa Rica with his wife and daughter for two, a two-week holiday. The trip was actually been his wife's idea. For weeks, Ellen had filled its ears about this wonderful national parks of Costa Rica and how good it would have been for Tina to see them. Then they had arrived, and turned out Ellen had an appointment to see a plastic surgeon in San Jose. That was the first Mike Bowman had ever heard about the excellent and inexpensive plastic surgery available in Costa Rica, and all the luxurious private clinics in San Jose. Of course, they had had a few, huge fight. Mike had felt like she had lied to him, and she had. And he put his foot down. It was about down about this plastic surgery business. Anyway, it was ridiculous. Ellen was only 30. She was a beautiful woman. Hell, she had been the homecoming queen her senior year at Rice, and that was not even 10 years ago. But Ellen tended to be insecure and worried. And it seemed as if in recent years she had mostly worried about losing her looks. That and everything else. The Land Rover bounced in a pothole, splashing mud. Seated beside him, Ellen said, Mike, are you sure this is the right road? We haven't seen other people for hours. There was another car 15 minutes ago, he reminded her. Remember the blue one? Going the other way? Darling, you want a deserted beach? He said, and that's what you're going to get. Ellen shook her head, doubtful. Hope you're right. Yeah, Dad, hope you're right, said Christina from the back seat. She was only eight years old. Trust me, I'm right. He drove in silence a moment. It's beautiful, isn't it? Look at the view. It is beautiful. It's okay, Tina said. Ellen got out of the compact and looked at herself in the mirror. Pressing underneath her eyes, she sighed and put the compact away. The road began to descend, and Mike Bowman concentrated on driving. Suddenly, a small black shape flashed across the road, and Tina shrieked, Look, look! Then, it was gone into the jungle. What was it? Ellen asked. A monkey? Maybe a squirrel monkey. Can I count it? Tina said, taking out her pencil. She was keeping a list of all the animals she had seen on her trip as a project for school. I don't know, Mike said doubtfully. Tina con consulted the picture in the guidebook. I don't think it was a squirrel monkey, she said. I think it was just another howler. They had already seen several howler monkeys already on their trip. Hey, she said more brightly, according to this book, beaches of Coast Cabo Blanco are frequented by a variety of wildlife, including howler and white-faced monkeys, three toad and cotomidas. You think we'll be able to see three toad sloths, Dad? I bet we do. Really? Just look in the mirror. Very funny, Dad. The road sloped downwards towards the jungle, towards the ocean. Mike Bowman felt like a hero. He was finally reaching the beach. The two-mile crescented of white sand, utterly deserted. He parked the land road over in the shade of a palm tree that fringed the beach and got a box lunches. Ellen had changed into her bathing suit, saying, Honestly, I don't know how we're, I'm going to get this weight off. You look great, hon. Actually, he felt like she was too thin, but he had learned not to mention that. Tina was already running down the beach. Don't forget your sunscreen, Ellen called. Later, Tina shouted over her shoulder. I was going to see if there's a, there's a sloth. Ellen Bowman looked around the beach. The trees, you... Do you think she'll be all right? Honey, there's nothing here for miles, Mike said. What about snakes? Oh, for God's sake, Mike Bowman said. There's no snakes on the beach. Well, there might be, honey, 
he said firmly. Snakes are cold-blooded. They're reptiles. They can't control their blood temperature. It's 90 degrees on the sand. If the snakes come out, they'd cook. Believe me, there are no snakes on this beach. He watched his daughter scamper down the beach. A dark spot on the white sand. Let her go. Let her have a good time. He put his arm around his wife's waist. Tina ran until she was exhausted. Then she threw herself down on the sand, gleefully rolling to the water's edge. The ocean was warm, and there was hardly any surf at all. She sat for, sat for a while, catching her breath. She looked back towards her parents, the car, to see how far she had come. Her mother waved and beckoned her. Tina waved back cheerfully, pretending she didn't understand. Tina didn't want to put on sunscreen. She didn't want to go back to her mother talking about losing weight. She wanted to stay right here and maybe see a sloth. Tina had seen a sloth two days earlier at the zoo in San Jose. It looked like a Muppet character. It seemed harmless, and in any case, it couldn't move fast. She could easily outrun it. Now her mother was calling to her. Tina decided to move out of the sun, back from the water, and into the shade of a palm tree. In this part of the beach, palm trees overlooked a huge gnarled tangle of mangrove roots, which blocked any sort of attempt at penetrating inland. Tina sat on the sand and kicked at dried mangrove leaves. She noticed many bird tracks in the sand. Costa Rica was famous for its birds. The guidebook said that there were three times as many birds in Costa Rica in all of, than all of America and Canada. In the sand, some three-toed bird tracks were small and faint and could hardly be seen. Other tracks were large and cut deeper into the sand. Tina looked idly at the tracks. She heard chirping, followed by a rustling in the mangrove thicket. Did sloths make a chirping sound? Tina didn't think so, but she wasn't sure. The chirping was probably some ocean bird. She waited quietly, not moving. Hearing the rustling again, she finally saw the source of the sound. A few yards away, a lizard emerged from the mangrove roots and peered at her. Tina held her breath. New animal for our list. The lizard stood up on its hind legs, balancing on its thick tail, and stared at her. Standing like that, almost a foot tall, dark green with brown stripes along its back. The tiny front legs ended with little lizard fingers that wiggled in the air. The lizard cocked its head and, and looked at her. Tina thought it was cute, sort of a big salamander. She raised her hand and wiggled her fingers back. The lizard wasn't frightened. It came towards her, walking upright on its hind legs. It was hardly bigger than a chicken, and like a chicken, it bobbed its head and wa as it walked. Tina thought it would make a wonderful pet. She had noticed a lizard had three toes, and it looked exactly like bird tracks. The lizard came closer. Tina kept her body still, not wanting to frighten the little animal. She was amazed at how it would come so close, but she remembered it was a this was a national park. All the animals in the park would know that they were protected. This lizard was probably tame. Maybe even expected her to give her it some food. Unfortunately, she didn't have any. Slowly, Tina extended her pa open palm to show she didn't have any food. The lizard paused, cocking its head, and chirped. Sorry, Tina said. I don't have anything. Then, suddenly, without warning, the lizard jumped onto her outstretched hand. Tina could feel those little toes pinching into the skin of her palm. She felt su the surprising weight of the little animal's body pressed against her, pressing her arms down. The little lizard scrambled up her arm towards her face. I wish I could just see her, Ellen Bowman said, squinting in the sunlight. That's all, just her. I'm sure she's fine, Mike said, picking through the box lunch packed by the hotel. There were unappetizing grilled chicken and some kind of meat-filled pastry. Not that Ellen would eat any of it. You don't think she'd leave the beach, Ellen said. No, hon, I don't. I feel so isolated here, Ellen said. I thought that's what you wanted, Mike Bowman said. I did. Well, then what's your problem? I just wish I could see her. Ellen said. Then, from down the beach, carried by the wind, they heard their daughter's voice, and she was screaming.